the management and the internal quality assurance cell of the St. Joseph's College Autonomous. I welcome each of you to the panel discussion on the self-study report, Success Mantra, the know-how, and the valedictory program of the national level seven-day online workshop on revised NAC norms and procedures under the ages of the UGC scheme, Paramarsh. Let us begin today's program by seeking the blessings of the Almighty. I request Ms. Girija, student first MSW, to read Almighty. Vignahantre Namastupyam Shankara Priyanandana Girija for that very soulful rendition. We now move on to the formal program. Uh, I invite Professor Clement D'Souza, Accreditation Ambassador of Paramarsh, Associate Professor in the Department of Economics and Vice Principal of the Arupe Block Shift 2 to present the welcome, uh, the welcome address. Over to you, sir. Esteemed chief guest and panelist of the evening, Professor 
Kumar Rath, Dr. Purnamani Raj, both advisors at Ministry of Education, Government of India. Below this, a rector for the Victor Lobo, a principals, members of Mentee of IQAC, and the cherished thing. It is indeed a beauty, all soaked in the delicate flow of mind. On all of the norms and procedures. This evening, the pleasure of welcoming and introducing Professor Amya Kumar Rat and Dr. Purnmani Raj. Well, I will not dwell on the professional side. Let me draw a pan education which is always motivating and emancipating. And then plan for quality enhancement in higher education. Dear sirs, Professor Amir Kumar Rat, Dr. Panmiri Raj, what inspiration, motivation, encouragement, and enthusiasm have in common? Well, we the fraternity of or obtain these things through magical personalities. God is so wise that he created friends with Christ. If he did, we would not have been able to afford a precious gift of a friend like you. Yours is a unique com companion we will not find any other type of relationship. Friday of higher education calls you both highly quality, professionally and socially empowered in higher education. We are indeed happy of welcoming you both. Instill passion for higher education. A warm welcome you, sirs. Earl Knight, a thinker, once remarked, everything begins with an idea. This workshop also began, the idea germinated at an informal design and director, Dr. Vaji and team. But like any new ideas, this has passed through three stages. Stage one, it can be done. Stage two, it probably can be done. Stage three, we knew it was a good idea all along and it will be done and so we have it. Well, we were little intellectually in till the idea materialized. And we are happy we are on the line. As Peter says, you need to search for a change, respond to it and exploit it on an opportunity. And accordingly, I warmly welcome the Father Rector for the principal, principal of many institutions, NAC team from many institutions, director, team, Paramesh, and all the participants from different colleagues across the country who are all looking for a quality change. All. Finally, let me close this welcome note on a positive a birth of Christ. She said, What I forget, what I see, I remember, what I do, I understand. In the last six days, you have heard what you need to do, you have seen what you need to do now. It's time to do it, and together we can do it. Wishing you success for the fruitful program. 
pleasure being with you all this evening. A warm welcome to all. Thank you, Professor. Uh, I apologize okay. to let me move ahead uh, to the panel discussion, which is uh, the important okay. part of today's program. This session will be moderated by Dr. Syed Wajid, the director of IQAC. Uh, over to you, Wajid, sir, for the panel discussion. Uh, thank you, uh, Poonam. Uh, dear participants, sorry for the technical glitch. Uh, just uh, wait for another couple of minutes. Dr. Amya Kumar would also be joining us. Okay, uh, he's unable to uh, connect through the link that we have shared. We're just sending it uh, him again. So kindly, just uh, you know, another two minutes. He should be with us, and we'll just start the program. Uh, dear sir, Panmudras, should we proceed with it, or do we wait? Uh, your audio is on mute, sir. So please, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hello? Uh, yes, sir. We are proceeding. Uh, Bajit, should I start or? Uh, no, sir. Just, just a kind introduction. So, good afternoon. Sorry for the technical glitch, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you all for this panel discussion on self-study reports, success mantra, the know-how. We have with us Professor Amya Kumar Rat and Dr. B.S. Panmiraj, advisors, National Assessment and Accreditation Council, an autonomous institution of the University Grant Commission, Ministry of Education, Government of India, as a panelist. Let me take this opportunity to introduce you all our panelist, Professor Amya Kumar. Professor Amir Kumar Rath, a graduate of computer engineering with MTech and doctorate degree in the same area of specialization. Presently, Professor Amir Kumar is working as advisor in the National Assessment and Accreditation Council, Bengaluru, India, on deputation from Veer Surendra Sai University of Technology, Barla, Odisha. Sir is exceptionally seasoned and dedicated computer engineering professor with a strong record in both teaching and administration. Professor Amir Kumar has experience of 27 years in engineering teaching at the college and university level with strong ability to deliver course material through a variety of teaching methods. Professor Amir Kumar has good presentation and communication skills. His creative and critical thinking abilities are amazing. He with his multitasking ability balances teaching and administrative duties. Professor Amir Kumar has over 150 research papers to his credit both national and international, and have authored eight books and are published by reputed publishers. Professor Amir Kumar has guided seven students for PhD and more than 40 students for MTech dissertation. Professor Amir Kumar has attended over 50 international conferences, including four at Singapore, Bangkok, Indonesia, and USA for professional development. Earned four awards for contribution to academics and research, visited over 50 higher education institutions across the country as the NACPUR team member for assessing the quality and relevance of education for the knowledge economy. Sir has also received a quite a number of awards, to name a few. International Education Excellence Award for Individual Contribution for International Integration by Global Achievers Summit at Bangkok, Thailand on 11th May 2013. Best Educationist Award from International Institute of Education and Management, New Delhi for Outstanding Achievements in the Field of Education on 25th July 2012. Rashtriya Vidya Gaurav Gold Medal Award from Indian Solidarity Council, New Delhi for Outstanding Achievements in the Field of Education, 25th July 2012. Best Educationist Award from Shivani Music Cultural Award, 20 2005 on contribution to academic research and publication of books in 2005. Sir, we are really honored with your presence. A hearty welcome to you, Professor Amir Kumar. A second panelist for today oh, is Dr. Uh, B.S. Uh, Mudiraj, 
Vajit sir, thank you, thank you for the wonderful introduction. I think uh, we will just go straight away with the question and uh, most uh, honourable, uh, respected uh, Deputy Chief Minister, who started and inaugurated the function of the seven-day UGC Parma scheme, and uh, Minister of Higher Education, IT, and BT Science and Technology Government of Karnataka, Dr. Uh, Professor S.C. Sharmaji, who was the keynote speaker for the program of a seven-day program, almost it is running for nine days, including our holidays. Our director, Nak, who, who gave the keynote address at the start of the program, all the resource person, criteria one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven together. Uh, dear audience, people who are watching live on Twitter, Facebook, as well as YouTube, and in this platform, Zoom, uh, sorry about it due to the technical glitches here and there. We have been waiting for a couple of minutes and I should say around 10 minutes or so. And uh, now we have joined uh, to come over that as teachers, we are overcoming all the small, small glitches. Uh, now, uh, we, we thank the UGC Parmash for the wonderful scheme. In addition to that, that is also reaching out for this. Uh, so many webinars, you may be aware, we urge the colleges to organize these type of functions. Honorable Principal, Secretary, Rector, and all the Director IQAC budget and the entire ICT team there and the people, a uh, very good evening. So straight away, we'll go to business. Uh, we expect uh, without any, uh, you know, kind of uh, formal introduction and uh, question answer by Wajit, we can see some questions straight away, we will take it up. And we wanted to have a small interaction with my good friend, Professor Amir Kumarat, who's sitting next to me. Both of us are here. So the panel, we, we first we thought I'd have a small presentation. Then I have some questions to, uh, Professor Amio, and Amio has some questions for me. So then we have Wajit questions. Then questions are on the chat as well as in Q&A. So let me start to uh, with all the questions here. I would like to start with uh, Dr. Professor Amio Kumar Rath, my good friend and colleague. Am I audible, Wajit? Uh, yes, and, sir. Yes, sir. Please go yeah, ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so just want to know uh, this criteria. Is it uh, this SSR preparation? The title is wonderful. Mantra you talked about. Is it too difficult to prepare? I want Amyo, you know, a kind of a, this is not an interview type of an, uh, you know, kind of a, a what we wanted to do a, a, a panel discussion. We will take up the questions also, but I have two, three questions to my friend, and my friend has two, three questions for me, especially on the data validation, verification, and things like that. But is it too difficult to prepare an SSR? Is it a cumbersome job? Is it too difficult to scan, you know, is it for a teachers to understand the metrics? So I would like to start the panel discussion for a question to Professor Amyo. Professor Amyo Kumar Rat, please. Uh, uh, thank you, Raz. This is uh, very important for all the higher education institutions. See, first of all, let us try to understand why NAC. So what is quality of education? Whether this NAC assessment and accreditation process will make a college or make a university to the highest level of quality in higher education. My point is when we look for quality, we have met some parameters with quality as criteria. Then we had some, see in every educational institutions, we have come up with this quantitative and qualitative metrics because when we talk about different, uh, I mean, it might have seen our quantitative metrics in every educational institutions, like number of PhDs, number of value added courses, these are all quantitative metrics, which, which, we, can, we, which we, we can try to find out, we can try to measure in last five years, which is important. Similarly, we have some qualitative metrics like uh, outcome-based education, whether what is the, I mean, student-centric learning is practiced or not. So all those points are important. I mean, let us let us try to understand, let us try to understand the kind of uh, uh, questions we asked in uh, in our criteria. We talk about curricular, we talk about teaching learning, we talk about research, we talk about student support, faculty contributions, governance, best practices. So if you look at the kind of I mean, um, assessment and accreditation throughout globe, if you look at the ranking framework, you will find these criteria, they put it in some other, other way. 
but you will find all those components are important. So definitely this metric is not cumbersome. Let us try to understand. Let us let us start doing the work from today itself. If you are going for after three years or four years of assessment and accreditation, if you start uh, start I mean finding the kind of back uh, information like. Uh, Today, if you are planning to get what information I had for last two years, three years, it'll be a little bit difficult. But if you start from today, if you start from today, looking at the metrics, it will be very easy for completing the process. At least within a week, we can complete the entire process of, uh, I mean, applying to NAC. Uh, I mean, thank you, thank you, Raj. Yeah. So I have a Uh, I just, uh, Professor Bajit, uh, Poonam, am I audible? Yes, sir, please. Yeah, go ahead, sir. Go ahead. There is a, the Farmash colleges or new colleges, sometimes 2F12B, not 2F12B, self-financing colleges, 10 years old, 8 years old, or 25 years old, engineering colleges. Is that only old colleges like your college, 140 years, 170 years, or 50 years, 2F12B, autonomous, but our colleges can get A grade, A plus, this is a common question whenever we go across, people talk about. We do understand, we see here and there some of the colleges, this is difficult because everybody wants A grade. But uh, we understand the preparation of SSR. You said it is easy, we have to be systematic, scientific, Professor Ramyo. So this is one common question which I come across. People in the audience may also may have because Parmash colleges are there, very new colleges, self-financing colleges. So in what is your advice for the mantra, for the SSR? And if at all, always everybody wants to get first class 90%, 100 out of 100 in mathematics, 12 standard or 8 standard or 10 standard. Similarly, IQAC coordinators and principals and management will have a lot of thinking. So I want uh, Professor Amyo to throw light on this, especially new colleges. First part, there are three parts of the question I put it across to him. One is, is it difficult? Second, whether, you know, uh, though the systematic and scientific, we are only very uh, new, 10 years, eight years old. So whether we can able to achieve or whether we can think about it. And uh, the fourth is a kind of a, a remark for my first two question itself. Uh, old colleges, new colleges can, because in the data of website in the NAC, we are seeing uh, self-financing colleges are also getting. It's not that they shouldn't get or something. So I gave him a clue of an answer, but, it's a kind of a discussion for him to throw more light. Professor Amyo, please. Yeah, for small colleges, Raj, it will be really easy because let me tell you, uh, Anna, I mean, if you look at uh, the process of assessment and accreditation, if only IQSC coordinators or the few people surrounded by IQSC coordinators or members of IQSC team, if they will do the work, it will be very difficult. My point is, it's a role of every teachers. Every teacher should publish papers. Every teacher should do conduct the I mean the kind of add-on courses. It's the role of every teachers. It's the role of principal to motivate the faculty members to to I mean to map to map the quality to map the running of the institutions into the process of NAC. If you really do that for a small college. It will be very easy for them to, to get a very good grade. But however, the role of faculty members are important. Proper documentation is important. The problem with us is we don't keep document properly. I mean, when there is a knack, they will start building documents. Let me tell you, let, let them, they will start collecting documents. In that case, it will be very difficult. My point is the faculty members moving from one college to other college without submitting the document to the existing college. For them, for that, it will be very difficult. Otherwise, if you do it systematically, the roles, role of faculty members, students should aware of the kind of work you are doing. Now in NEP also, we talk about outcome-based education. If the students, we talk about student-centric learning. If the students will not get benefit out of that, then what is the use of, uh, use of outcome-based education or 
student centric learning my point is students would understand why this course outcome why this program outcome what is graduate attributes all those things students should understand faculty members should, should understand faculty members should be trained on how to teach how to make a students understand in the class other than the technical teaching they should they should teach something which is pedagogical teaching how to teach us to how to teach a, how to make a students understand in the class all those things are important for a for a small college it will be very easy but all the responsibility of all faculty members are important the students role is important the administrative role is important the committee which is in place or all, all i mean their role is very important for making uh, making a, making a good uh, assessment and accreditation a reality uh, let me now just take up two three questions on the floor professor wajid uh, yes so sir. my third question to professor amyo will be uh, so a little light on dvv and this documentation what is this documentation we are a new college uh you are saying about documentation either criterion 2 or criterion 5 any examples so i want amyo to answer my third question before that he could answer i'm picking up two three questions from the chat itself uh will it be punam is it okay dr bajit go ahead yeah feel okay, free yeah, yeah 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 okay sam so this is from uh jay prakash jay prakash okay on curriculum design and development average percentage of courses having focus on employability entrepreneurship skill development offered by the university last 5 years okay and uh, this is 5 uh, years yes sub series of question 1.3.1 institution integrates cross cutting issues relevant to professional ethics and gender values human values environment and sustainability into curriculum and uh, criterion 2 teaching learning and evaluation student centric methods such as experiential learning participative learning problem solving methodology are used in their enhanced learnings uh, j prakash from anomaly universities i think uh, i think uh, uh, he is making a statement on support of us i don't see any uh, question by that dr j prakash from anomaly university to us in case just now uh, professor amyo told about it on the pedagogy also on the pedagogy he mentioned it he mentioned about the a uh, programs now ram and rajagopalan sir can the same student take more than one certificate course in different subjects in the same academic year in the same academic year ram and rajagopalan sir can uh, the same student take more than one certificate course in the same academic year professor ram you I mean, uh, DVV. The same students can take multiple certificates, but uh, but we try to consider only one because, see, similarly for many metric, talk about faculty contribution, also faculty going for development programs and all that. We expect we expect many students to participate. Participate. We expect many faculty members to to attend uh, different programs. So I mean, because of that. you know we made our standard operating procedures very clear we have written that if multiple i mean same students get multiple certificates it will be considered only once yeah see as far as dvp is concerned there are two things we look for we look for a template and we look for supporting documents when you prepare when you prepare the report look for the template what we have asked i i could say that some of the universities and colleges they are trying to change the document they are trying to change the template they they put some fields depends on their uh, i mean uh, their need i mean the, what they have but please don't change the uh, template fields whatever the template we have use the template you fill in the template see always it's better how to how to make it very systematic start from a year suppose if it is uh, 1920 is your academic year i mean current academic year right 2019 20 submit the document for 1920 then 18 19 then 17 18 i mean down 5 uh, years submit the documents along with that in every metric we look for any other information from the college in any other informations if you do lot of activities 
which is not fit into uh, that particular metric, you put it in a kind of report, you put it in kind of report and, and, and put it uh, systematically year wise in that any other uh, information. And uh, template and supporting documents. When we talk about supporting documents, then supporting documents, it has to be, it has to be, I mean, you put it in a uh, file and uh, uh, scan those files and, and upload it. You might be thinking there are a lot of documents what we need to do because we have a lot of activities we have done a lot of documents but your metric doesn't support each metric support only 5 mb of data to be uploaded in that case you put it in the website give the url link there but when you are putting it in the website see that it is opening it might so happen that if you if you open that from your universities and colleges it will work but if you open from some other places, it will not work. See that you open from different places and try to find out whether it's working or not. Those templates are important, supporting documents are important. If you do systematic, there's a, there a mapping between uh, templates, the data you are submitting and the supporting documents. If you have a perfect mapping, uh, then, then you will not find difficulties in submitting the documents. And it will be easy for the DBB partners because they are all third party. They will try to understand what exactly, I mean, uh, you are doing in your, uh, or conducting in your uh, institutions. They're trying to try to find out. So in that case, it will be easy for them to validate the data, to verify the data submitted by you. If you don't give it properly, if you, and, and, and always follow our SOP standard operating, follow the standard operating procedures. If you follow the standard operating procedures from there, you can understand that uh, that uh, what is to be what is to be up uploaded and what is not to be uploaded it will tell you the information about what is to be uploaded and what is not to be uploaded uh, that's all uh, related to dvb next uh, one more details yeah <clears throat> So meanwhile, can I ask you a few questions that has come offline as well? Yes, yes. Go ahead, yeah. go ahead. Uh, so go ahead. Go ahead. College Hunsur, uh, the question that they've asked here is, now rural colleges find it difficult to implement high impact factor journals and databases in the library. Now, because it you know costs a lot of investment there. Now, how do you think that the rural college should cope up with the sort of uh, problem that they're facing in terms of the finances in you know, giving the best infrastructure to the students? So you mean to say publishing papers or uh, procuring- uh, Infrastructure, procuring journals and all uh, for the library. Uh, see, procuring journals, some consortiums, I mean, from that consortiums, they can get it. Yeah, for them, maybe a small college, Try to, they try to find out from the consortium where there will be a uh, price is a little less. See, when mm. we we uh, procure journal from uh, for our universities, my universities there, I mean in uh, Burla, possibly we take a lot of we spend a lot of money to uh, procure uh, journals. But for a small college, whatever is necessary, they can procure, which will not be that costly. But apart from that, if faculty has real interest. To, to do some uh, activities which is not available in those journals, they can they can go to some IITs, they can go to some uh, I mean IAC or uh, different uh, good universities, try to download and uh, and use it for their own purpose. But but uh, but uh, research you know now this uh, open access and a lot of things are available. You know there are uh, ways and means to download uh, journals, and uh, for doing research. It will not be a difficult task in getting papers. I mean, if you talk about uh, the kind of work we have done past 20, 25 years back, it was very difficult to download a paper even. Uh, in those days also we collected papers from different... Uh, and uh, do research and all that. It'll, but only motivation is necessary. Uh, I mean, you need to have the, the kind of work you do and you need to try to find out what is the kind of work in India people are doing it. You, you make some kind of collaborations. Uh, collaboration mm -hmm. means, I mean, faculty exchange, I mean, kind of, if you send a mail also, I mean, definitely you get a reply. And uh, if you publish a good paper, 
definitely you have some collaboration with them and uh, uh, try to try to publish papers and uh, getting journal is not difficult these days uh, for pursuing research yes thank so much for the answer so there is another question by netravati uh, she asked like you know so we are private affiliated colleges how to seek nac sponsorship for fdp or workshops we are not move still for nac because they are the mental institution and they want to collaborate with nac in organizing fdps and also they are just looking for the way out how exactly should they be doing it yeah uh, only you would like to answer or i will answer this question yes okay see uh. hello uh, yes sir we can hear you uh the, sorry the question is about nac sponsorship for the non accredited colleges yet to get accreditation yes sir perfect yeah 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 normally for the nac sponsored seminars uh mm -hmm. for with the financial assistance without financial assistance two things are there okay. and uh, during the covid period our guidelines have changed it is on the website and uh, mm -hmm. we are just motivating the we are not a funding body but still we motivate people to just have to have the quality sustenance so nac sponsorship during mm -hmm. the five year period or a seven year period of accreditation we give once in a period okay. uh, for a workshop seminar conferences symposia like that so first mm -hmm. ask them to get accreditation this is very very essential okay. then they can always apply for nac sponsored uh, seminar sure so thank you sir so there's another uh, question i think uh, might be uh, good for so bad devi and Some yeah, classrooms the and lab facilities. Should I? Sorry, uh, Hi, should I please. go ahead, sir, with the question? Please. So, uh, classrooms and lab facilities are used for multiple programs. So, uh, in colleges, like it's not uh, what is, which is a good practice. We talk about the resource mobilization. So, the same classroom would be used for multiple programs. Now, the concept of this geo tagging, and for a program, if we say geo tag, and this classroom is being used for this program. and if it's being again shown for another program will there be any issues in the process of you know uh, uh, assessment or uh, accreditation is what the question is hope i made the question clear see when we talk about uh, ict facilities hmm. see there is nothing wrong that uh, using the uh, facilities in a in a in a in a most uh, man, uh, better manner so that uh, the infrastructure has to be utilized more uh, efficiently but however they don't mm. think of what whether how many geo, how many um, i mean um, ict facilities nac will count so to to make it more in number uh, don't try to put uh, uh, more uh, ict facilities and all that counting don't do that my point is try to try to see see if you have six facilities if you are sharing the facilities and the kind of to students you have total number of students that six ict facilities in the institution is sufficient right six what there's nothing wrong in that my point is don't think of having a benchmark kind of things you you try to have your own benchmark how many facilities you need how many projectors you need how many digital rooms you need don't try to do something just to show it to nac my point is i your question is valid uh, you mean to say that uh, if you if you give same classroom twice whether nac will consider once or nac will consider two numbers they are different okay but 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 try to try to i mean put it the way uh, it's it's uh, is it's really essential uh, for the students and faculty members is that uh, i mean i mean don't see only the nac uh, uh, quality nac will increase i will get good grade let us increase number of it ict facilities don't do that this is my request to all uh, higher education institutions thank you sir so the addition to the same so uh, professor uh, one professor agvendra asks like you know this geo tagging has come in for the last two uh, years now what happens now if they are going for the nac and for the last 5 year data they'll have to give it so they have not been tagged for the previous 3 years now for 2 years have done it so when they go for this ssr uh, how do we they account for the same thing so that that we are considering if it is it is beyond before that okay you write something that where mm. um, when it uh, this photograph has been taken and all that 
we consider that also. If we, even if it is not geotagging, we consider that also. There's nothing, I mean, you can't uh, create geotagging photographs if you, if you mm -hmm. don't have, if some photographs has been taken previously, there's nothing wrong, mm -hmm. you can submit those documents. Okay, thank you. So uh, the other question from uh, Government College of Commerce and uh, Economics, uh, uh, Baroda, Arga, Goa. So they asked, like, you know, when we are collecting feedback from parents, employers, alumni, teachers, now is it only for the current year? That is now they're going for the NAC and it's only for the last year, or every year you'll have to be collecting it and, you know, uh, tabulate it? So you try to find out whether you will need it for NAC or you will need it for improving the quality of education. You will need it to submit it to NAC or you will need it really to improve the uh, curricular component of it. That is my questions to, I mean, to, to you, because if you really want the quality of education to improve, quality of syllabus to improve, teaching learning to improve, you should collect from all. Forget about what NAC is considering. NAC, see, you should go beyond NAC. When we talk about quality, you should go beyond NAC. That's important. We ask, we ask some component from it. That is not the that is not the way you should target. You should target something beyond NAC. Try to collect feedback from every year. All faculty members let them involve all the students from different uh, I mean different uh, I mean uh, uh, different semesters. I mean collect from faculty members, parents, and all that try to consolidate the uh, syllabus component of it and try to see i mean in in if you do that uh, uh, kind of exercise you try to find out that what is necessary for the students if it is industry orientation is concerned or or employability is concerned don't please go beyond NAC. that's my simple answer to this question Thank you, sir. Thank you for answering that question. Now, uh, there's another question from Sacred Hearts College, First Grade College. Do lesson plans need to incorporate the POs, PSOs, and outcomes? If so, is there a particular format for the same, or can it be left to the affiliated colleges to structure the same? This is a question. In addition to this question, I also have a question that I just want to connect with this. So, you know, I, I think you're also aware that Karnataka colleges, like, you know, and also Andhra colleges, we have this triple major that we offer. Now, uh, there is a lot of you know, issues when it comes to, you know, defining these, you know, uh, PSOs, POs, and COs. Because when you're talking about the graduation outcome, we need to keep in mind as a program, what is the outcome? So that means uh, we have to look at all of the three majors and then start defining them. So uh, this is a little a practical issue. So do you have any sort of solution to the sort of a problem? How do you define it? Uh, so these are two connected questions. I just wanted to ask you, sir. So kindly throw some light on it. See, let us try to understand what is our uh, graduate uh, outcomes, right? Mm -hmm. Graduate outcomes. At the end of a program, somebody, some student is completing the program after completing the program, what is the knowledge, skills, competencies, behaviors, attitudes, what it, he should develop? He doesn't have before coming to the program. Let's say he doesn't have those. It's the duty of faculty members. It's the duty of teachers. It's the duty of uh, the environment and the infrastructure and the, and the administrator to see that all those graduate attributes, whatever you have defined. So those graduates attributes defining is very important. There are, of course, there are standard uh, graduate attributes. Talk about your uh, I mean, uh, knowledge in the subjects, disciplines, problem solving, I mean, um, uh, investigation of complex problems, lifelong learning, project management and finance, all that. Based on that, your curriculum and syllabus is defined. There's a difference between curricular and syllabus, right? Hope, uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, people know about it, right? So based on that, it's the responsibility of the university. If the university is not done, it's the responsibility of the teachers to find out the course outcome for every subject, every course. Of course, based on the graduate attributes, you have defined your program outcomes. What is the outcome of the program? Then 
based on that the, i mean the faculty members has to has to develop the course outcome based on bloom's taxonomy talk about taking the students from low order thinking to high order thinking we should focus mostly on the high order thinking skills when you are developing your course outcomes that course outcome mapping with program outcomes the program outcomes may be common for bsc computer science maybe for bsc physics and bsc chemistry but the program specific outcomes are different i will have some specific outcome for the program that i am offering maybe for bsc computer science we have a specific outcomes for bsc uh, physics we have a specific outcomes i have to find out what is the mapping between this course outcome and program outcome then the program outcome and program educational objectives right that that's all important ultimately output is basically how many students completed but outcome is knowledge competencies behaviors attitudes national education policy they talk about outcome based education right in this role of faculty members are very important role of faculty members are very important to to implement outcome based education only defining course outcomes program outcomes mapping i mean the ask the questions based on higher order thinking skills in the course questions write down from which co it has come out i mean take the input from different stakeholders talk about alumni talk about employers talk about uh, the external examiners who 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 comes for uh, examining the students you collect feedback from all stakeholders in the assessment also you have some direct assessment and indirect assessment when we when we when we talk about your curriculum and syllabus try to find out the student exit survey for preparing the curriculum and syllabus make the curriculum make the delivery mechanism make the assessment when you talk about assessment take direct assessment indirect assessment what is direct assessment take direct assessment i mean from the mid semester examinations from the quiz from the assignments from the end semester examinations indirect assessment take the feedback from the students if you do that definitely this uh, outcome based education uh, definitely the students uh, will get benefit uh, out of this so thank you sir thank you for answering that question so again there is another question in connection to the same when it comes to student progression now when you say student progression getting jobs placements in companies and all you might get some sort of data the id and all of that there are students who start some uh, jobs on their own as entrepreneurs there are also students who would you know join their parents business and all of that so in those cases it's kind of difficult for them to say you know what is their sort of salary you know what is their earnings and all so uh, in these cases how do you you know record uh, their uh, progression that's another question that has been asked and uh, you could say even this is a question also from our college because we also face this issue you know whether it's nirf or for nac and all you know when we give the student progression you know we get a lot of students who are working for self in the sense for the parents and all the doer but that is also an employment uh, finally we are looking at you know knowledge and skills for them to get employed if they are employed by other means like entrepreneurs or other things now uh, if you have to record the data how do we go about recording such data yeah Can that's what because yeah if you have 100 students Hmm. suppose your uh, 20 students have gone for higher studies hmm. maybe 10 students have gone for entrepreneurship it cannot be more than 100 right Correct. sometimes Correct. sometimes the institutions are submitting data which is more than 100 oh. they are telling 100 students are going for progress i mean uh, higher studies 100 students hmm. are or 50 students are going for uh, i mean um, this uh, exam um, the, i mean this employment and again mm -hmm. 20 students are going for entrepreneurship my point is Hmm. if there are multiple i mean a student has got a job and he he also wants to go for higher studies let us try to find out whether he has gone for higher studies or he has gone for uh, i mean placement because don't try to just like that don't try to score this, uh, i mean before uh, sometimes before i was mentioning that please go beyond nac and improve the quality of educations in all the criteria whatever we have mentioned that's very important quality of education is important students employability is important students are properly educated is important today in covid pandemic if the students children are there at home without going outside that means we have achieved something 
my point is uh, when you look at the graduate attributes even protecting environment professional i mean human values professional ethics so many things we have mentioned see uh, collecting see, that's what we said you will say that one in in one in part of story you will say all alumni are participating in all those activities other part you say we don't have statistics of students going for placement or students going for higher studies okay so you are contradicting yourself when you are saying that mm. we have good placement we are when you are saying that our our alumni are very strong 100% alumni are participating in all those activities at the same time you should have statistics of all the students because when we talk about program educational objectives what is program educational objectives 3 to 5 years after graduation you try to find out where they are the skills and knowledge competencies which they have produced after completing the program whether they have retained or they have gone they have gone beyond right so th so that is in that case you should have statistics of all that even if somebody is doing a business the family business you write it there nag is holistically consider the data submitted by the institution in the family business let them let him be involved in the family business being an entrepreneur but nag holistically will look at the data submitted by the institutions thank you sir so uh, i think the time is running i hope can we take up a few more questions with your permission because yes, yes. go ahead sure 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 please please thank you so this question uh, uh, is uh, from one of a uh, participant here now due to pandemic this year lot of activities have been hampered whether it could be conducting of programs or you know certificate uh, courses and all of that yeah. and there's also lot of students could not attend classes because of you know the uh, connectivity issues uh, they cannot afford you know the phones and all of that and uh, because of this a lot of uh, issues that uh, they have faced now will nac take this pandemic situation into consideration is what the question uh, one of the participant has asked see for 1920 academic year hmm. see ours is very crystal clear hmm. if you submit iiq after 31st may suppose let's give an example hmm. after 31st may 2020 hmm. if you submit the document if you submit the iiq the 1920 is the current academic year for hmm. 1920 instead of july to june for considering the academic data we hmm. have extended up to 31st december 2020 mm -hmm. that means current academic year 1920 up to 31st december 2020 the kind mm -hmm. of activities you have done we will mm -hmm. consider those data it will be beneficial to the uh, to the faculty members to the institutions it will be beneficial to them even if online programs you are conducting you are attending mm -hmm. faculty development programs online you are conducting faculty organizing faculty development programs online it will be considered by nac before this covid pandemic if you look at our manual our manual clearly says face to face slash online both will be considered by nac my point is you should the college should really uh, do and the uh, activities for the students where the i mean ultimately nac wants the quality education should prevail in all educational institutions where students should get maximum benefit out of it faculty members should get ben most benefit out of it as far as our uh, bibliometric our uh, i mean uh, citations are concerned we look for a calendar year suppose you have submitted your ssr in 2020 before 31st december 2020 in that case we consider 2019 18 17 16 15 five years whatever the publication in 2020 will not be considered it will be for calendar year but lot of things whatever in the covid pandemic we have done and many of the institutions they are doing it will be considered by nac till 31st december 2020 for academic year 1920 thank you sir so uh, one mr david raj has asked from the youtube is it compulsory to have nac accreditation for a college to get affiliated i think uh, yeah uh, not, kindly not, yeah, not uh, yeah uh, so the other question that i just have here is like you know uh, annual quality assurance uh, uh, reports are submitted annually and then uh, when they go for the ssr preparation 
Now, during the submission of this AQAR, if they have missed any of the data, and can they add the data missed when they go for you know uh, the SSR uh, submission? See, if they have missed in annual quality assurance report, mm. they, they can submit very well. They can submit during the time of submission of such study report. However, okay. however, there mm. cannot be 100% or 100% increase of data. Okay. You will say that I have only add-on courses, two add-on courses we have conducted. During the time of SSR, mm. you will say I have 200 add-on courses certificate courses mm -hmm. we have conducted. It cannot be true. Mm -hmm. That is my point. When we look for data, we look for uh, AQAR report, we mm -hmm. look for SSR. If it is reassessment, we look for the previous SSR report. We look for uh, AISHC, we look for AICT, we look for NIRF, we look for all those data. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, the data submitted by the institution should be in uniform in all those places. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So there's a question on uh, student satisfaction survey. Does NAC consider the feedback from all students into consideration? Since some students are not all regular to the class, hence their feedback might not be uh, appropriate. So some light could you throw on this, sir? Can I take it up, Professor Ramio? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Go ahead, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. I, I, would, I would like to tell a small uh, kind of an anecdote or a story or whatever or experience sharing. Uh, this yes. is on the seminars it happens. I'm taking mm -hmm. a class of MSc statistics, fourth semester. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. people ask, uh, there is uh, only 70% and above the students have participated in the attendance. So they should be given feedback form. They have every right to uh, give the feedback. This fellow has bunked or did not attend the class uh, for 40%, 60% attendance only has, or 50% attendance. Sports activities, cultural activities, are different, various reasons. Or simply uh, he was unwell or whatever it is. Or he has bunked the classes, various reasons. So you should also think why the student is cutting the class. Because mm -hmm. I'm not teaching well. So that also could be true. I'm just only uh, mm -hmm. posing a question. So why mm -hmm. The people with 100% attendance only should give uh, feedback. Why not mm -hmm. people who are less attendance because they don't like the class the way you teach or the way you give examples or you have been uh, not given uh, proper attention. This is this is both sides we can look at it. But mm -hmm. NAC doesn't say regarding who should be given student satisfaction survey. It is a randomized process. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes uh, triple S takes uh, you know the minimum 10% response of 500 students or 100 for colleges should come. For mm -hmm. universities, deemed universities, and open universities, all the standards are different. Mm -hmm. And it is randomly distributed first year, second year, third year, all the, no, no, it's a program uh, ways it is to distribute to 30% of the students to get, and again, the remaining students it gets administered. And the, sur the survey itself is on the, the questionnaire itself is on the website. It can be in Hindi, it's in English, you can translate to Canada, Malayalam, uh, Telugu, Tamil, any Assamese, any language, and you can get administered. And the corollary of the question in AQAR. So mm -hmm. do we follow the same question or we can have our own questionnaire for feedback? You must understand mm -hmm. NAC is an external quality assurance agency. We ask in AQAR whether you have a feedback system. Already mm -hmm. Amir told about it on curriculum, on, to, on the teaching learning, on you can have in everything. And again on curriculum from the, from the employers. People, there was one question I saw people are not giving, sir. You go and sit with the employer and tell this is what is curriculum, this is what the syllabus is, this is what we teach. We want your feedback rather than just writing one letter and saying, give your feedback. So anyway, I jumped into two things. One is about triple S, the other one is about the feedback. So very important is triple S student satisfaction survey. And mm -hmm. it has to be administered across and NAC administers across through a randomized process. Minimum attendance is immaterial to us as far as current triple S process is concerned. Amir would like to add. Thank you, sir. So Amir you. would like to add. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay, Raj. Thank you. Thank you. Are we running short of time? Uh, yeah, I think with your permission, can I just take last two questions so that uh, yes, we move yes, on? Yes, yes, there's one. There's one. Yeah. Uh, the question that uh, one of the um, participants asked, like, can they consider library a faculty, like you know, the uh, librarian, as a faculty of the, though uh, he's not teaching, 
uh, can we include his or her name also in the faculty list when we submit the number of faculty present in our institution? Uh, was it clear with my question? question was clear. Amyo, can I? Uh, yes, sir. Go ahead, Raz. Go ahead. So first, uh, very important, uh, you must understand uh, the concurrent list of education, state government mm. and central government. Mm. So we are addressing a college. We are addressing UG college, PG college, autonomous college, aided colleges. If it is a sanctioned post, aided college, I'm talking about aided college. I'm talking in three levels. Mm. Aided college, if it's a sanctioned post and as a state government, as per state government, librarian and director of physical education, directress or director, whether it is not mm. a teaching department, they don't have BLIC, MLIC, MPhil, PhD, library science, MPA, BPA, they don't have. But there is a director of physical education, aided post. And in the, as for the state government norms, if it comes under a faculty, teaching faculty, please include. Mm -hmm. As far as UGC is concerned, you know the rules that there's a teaching faculty, librarian and the director of physical education was considered as teaching faculties. Mm -hmm. So you must be clear in your state government, what the state government talks about. If mm -hmm. the state government puts you in a non-teaching staff, you're a non-teaching staff. If your state government and your university considers them for self-financing colleges and Paramash colleges, you should understand. What do your university says? So accordingly, you can include this. Thank Amir? you, sir. One last question. Uh so one last question because the list is uh, going up and uh, so the question uh, that they ask is like you know when you're talking about the uh, campus placement data because most of the places it says campus placement uh, but there are also placement done off campus like you know self placed or through references and all of that can they include all that data that has been placed or do we have to only give campus placement that's another question that has been asked so sir panmurigat sir or so please go through the standard operating procedure and the revised manual if i'm right 16th november 2020 so the question mm -hmm. is i think if i'm right it is about how many students are placed in mm -hmm. place it is not about okay. placement so earlier it was placement so how many companies come how many companies give uh, offer letters and all those things is that now it is how many are placed we need proof of evidence as per sop standard operating procedures Okay, there sure, is not. Sure. It is also talked about uh, on the produce, not only place it talks. Mm -hmm. I think just please go through the metrics and the SOPs. Okay, it will be considered. Amyo, you would like to add something? That was the last question. Yes, yes, you are absolutely right. We asked for how many students placed, whether it can be off campus, on campus. So we hardly it matters to us. If number of students placed, they can submit the, uh, submit the details. So on that note, uh, I thank both uh, the panelists, uh, Professor Amir Kumarath and Dr. Panmuri Ratsa. So yes, the topic that we gave uh, successful uh, preparation of SSR, the success mantra, the know-how, all that has been attained to the question and answer session. So we got to hear all the answers from the experts who are in the field of that. So I would... Uh, Thank both of you for the same, sir. And uh, what was reiterated, and I just want to you know, point it out to the audience here is, yes, role of teacher uh, in the NAC process is very important. Every uh, teacher is accountable for the process, whatever we talk about the assessment and the uh, accreditation is one. And then documentation is uh, something that you also reiterated that whatever we do has to get documented. So that is something that we need to be looking at. And outcome-based education, there has to be clarity as to why are we offering program and to whom are you offering your programs. And you also said about the feedbacks that to be maintained, the exit surveys to be kind of collected. And you know what uh, more that can we expect uh, you know, uh, from both of you like we, both of you have answered all the questions and you know, most of the questions and uh, you know the list is still going on you know, because of the paucity of the time uh, i uh, we conclude this panel uh, discussion and uh, i just want to conclude this with a note to all the participants who are present here so uh, what i would just like to say is without your involvement you can't succeed with your involvement you can't fail 
now this is a quote by abdul kalam so i request all of you to involve yourselves so that you know all of you succeed in turn the institutions that you're working for also sort of succeed in turn the students who are coming to these higher education institutions are also getting knowledge skills and also getting placed so at this note i once again thank professor amir kumar rath and uh, professor panvi rasa for taking your time off from your busy schedule i know how uh, you sort of function uh, day in and out with all that you just managed to come here so thank you very much I wholeheartedly thank both of you and apologies for the technical glitch that you faced so we'll uh, ensure that things are going to get better in the future thank you both thanks thank you wajid thank you on behalf of the director nak prof resi sharma who permitted both of us myself and uh, prof samya kumar rat uh, we thank uh, all the participants all the participants for your questions some of the questions are still coming i am seeing about the university of permanent yes. affiliation not necessary but you can just collect it and give it to push it to us we will send it a uh, reply by email thank you prof samya thank you wajid thank you the principal honorable principal and all the management people all the people who are watching live and the compia thank you dr poonam so kind thank request you. in case you have a little time do you like to stay with us for the valedictory program yeah can we log off sign off okay sir with your permission so thank you very much sir punam uh, do you have to say anything from your side yeah i'd like to thank uh, professor amya kumar rat and dr panmudi raj uh, for so graciously answering all the questions and even offering to answer most of the questions over email we are uh, indeed very grateful to both of you and uh, thank you for joining us today it really made this panel discussion very uh, fruitful uh, and i'm sure all of us have taken back a lot of inputs that we'll now have to put into practice so thank you both of you all it's been a great uh, pleasure having both of you with us today thank you sirs Uh, and thank, thank you, you wajid sir as well uh, for moderating this session so beautifully so thank you everybody uh, thank you sir now... thank you thank you punam yeah yes sir um, so due to the paucity of time we may not go ahead with a break now as per originally planned we will directly move on to the valedictory session uh, for the seven day national level workshop uh, to be concluded now uh, the valedictory program is just to take stock of how things have proceeded in the last seven working days that we've been together where we've all collectively learned and worked hard uh, so based on that uh, we will start the valedictory i request uh, uh, those who have their mics on you are muted uh yes i guess now i am audible to everybody right so we'll move ahead with the valedictory program um we begin this valedictory program by the release of the iqac newsletter i request dr sayed wajid to take over the proceedings of the same over to you sir thank you uh, punam uh dear all uh, it's been uh, i would say kind of in you know, a joyous uh, moment for uh, us the iqac team and also the team who have been working very hard towards like you know coming with a newsletter a, a e newsletter so that is yes. uh, we bring to you a iqac e newsletter what's called yes. as calidad now this yes. calidad in spanish means quality yes. so nac yes. insist on quality not necessarily that nac has to insist because all of us you know we have to work towards like you know bringing in quality in whatever we do that is quality should become the defining element and it should reflect in the functioning of all our day to day activities okay so what we are trying to convey to this calidad we are unfurling the activities of a college so i request you all join hands as we release this uh, iqac e newsletter calidad so with the permission of uh, the resource persons if they are still with us the rector and the registrar will release the teaser of the iqac newsletter can i have the teaser of the iqac newsletter ajit sir is the screen visible yes sir alan
Thank you, Alan and Ponam. We will proceed with the further program. Thank you, Vajit sir, uh, for unfurling Calidad. I hope we all maintain quality in all that we do for the greater uh, improvement of education, higher education in the country and in the world. Uh, I now invite uh, Dr. Alan Godfrey, Assistant Professor, Department of Social Work and Criteria Coordinator of IQAC to give us a brief summary of the seven day national level workshop. Over to you, Dr. Allen. Good evening, Poonam. Am I audible? Uh, yes, you are, uh, Dr. Allen. Is my screen visible? Yes, sir, it is. Thank you. A very good afternoon to one and all present over here. On the outset, we would like to thank everyone who has been patiently attending all these seven days webinar with us and uh, getting a lot of insights out of it. Now I'm here to present on a report, a summary of all the days of proceeding that we've had. The day one of our in, uh, program had the I'm inauguration. Sorry to interrupt. I think you need to go to the slide play mode. Yeah. So is it visible? Yeah. The Current slide is visible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Is it visible now? Yeah, the, the slide is projected. Yes. Very good, sir. Thank you. All right. The day one of the program started with the inaugural ceremony of the workshop on uh, the webinar theme, the revised national norms and procedures under the aegis of the UGC scheme, Paramash. We had Dr. Ashwat Narayan, the Honorable Deputy Chief Minister. Uh, and the Minister for Higher Education of Karnataka being the chief guest of the day, the guest of honours and our beloved Father Rector and Principal having, us, uh, having them with us on the day one of our uh, celebration with the inaugural ceremony. Uh, the, day, the day two of the ceremony the day two of the ceremony was uh, dedicated for discussing upon the curricular aspects of the uh, UGC curriculums. And uh, we had fa Dr. Father Davis George, Director of St. Aloysius Institute of Technology from Jabalpur, Madhya Pradesh, to be the resource person for the day. Day three had, uh, the day three had uh, a session on teaching, learning, and evaluation. Dr. K. Karanakaran, Chief Executive Officer of uh, the Hindustan Educational Institution, Paimbatu was the resource person for the day. The uh, day four had Dr. Father S. Ignasimutu, Director, Xavier Institute Research Foundation, uh, St. Xavier's College Autonomous, being the resource person for the day. And the theme of the uh, day was on research, innovation, and extension. The day five of the webinar, we had Dr. Shobana Vasudevan, principal of RA Kodar College, Mumbai. And the topic was on infrastructure and learning resources. <laughs> the fifth day, we had Dr. B. Vanita, secretary of KG ISL Educational Institutions, Paimbatu. And the session was on student support and uh, progression. The uh, day six was on uh, governance, leadership and management and institutional values and best practices. This was a two sessions club together for the day. Dr. A. Joseph Durairaj, Dean School of English and Foreign Languages, Gandhi Gram Rural Institute was the resource person uh, for the day. And today was the last day, the day seven, uh, which had the panel discussion and right now the valediction ceremony as well, where we had the panelists Dr. Uh, Professor Amiya Kumar Raj, Advisor NAC, and Dr. B.S. Ponmudi Raj, Advisor NAC. Along with us, the moderator for the session, Dr. Syed Wajid, having the session for the day. Now, in all these days, we had a very good number of participants attending, attending with us. And uh, we had a lot of uh, questions that had uh, come inside uh, for the day. Also, if you look at it, right from day one, the sessions have uh, moved on very well, uh, where, you know, the, uh, the guest of honor, uh, you know, spoke about uh, the aspects of accredited uh, framework of NAC 
and uh, how uh, Father Rector also you know, spoke to us on the role of teachers in the accreditation process. In the day two, we had uh, the curricular aspects, which was led by uh, for the Davis George, where you know he highlighted about uh, the curriculum design, delivery, and assessment to meet the demands of the uh, current trends. On day three, while talking about teaching, learning, and evaluation, we had uh, uh, Dr. K. Karanakaran speaking to us on uh, student-centric approaches in the teaching learning process, catering to diverse needs and innovation related to ICT digital tools. On day four, we had uh, the session on research, innovation, and extension, where we had Father Inyasimoto talking to us about promotion of research and the emphasis or to be given on research activities, publication, and also reaching out to the society through various extension activities. Uh, I also uh, remember Father Inyasimuthu uh, very directly talking about how the research that we conduct also needs to be something that provides solution to the real needs of the people in the vicinity. On day four, where we had the discussion on infrastructure and learning resources, Dr. Shobhana Vasudevan, spoke to us about a detailed overview on infrastructure maintenance, making students accountable for infrastructure by giving responsibilities of the infrastructure. The uh, session five, which was on student support and progression, where the resource person was Dr. P. Vanita, spoke to us about an analysis of student placement and the weightage of marks. The previous session, which we had, which was clubbed into two, governance, leadership and management, and institutional values and best practices, where Dr. A. Joseph Durairaj was the resource person. He spoke to us about the importance and ways of implementing e-governance. He also familiarized the audience with functions of IQAC, best practices, distinctiveness, sustainability, placements, and memorandum of understandings. The last day today, we had uh, witnessed the uh, panel discussion and a very good uh, question and answer session where we had different institutions participating along with us, posting various questions about infrastructure, questions about um, research, research eth ethics, also about uh, different modes of, you know, uh, different aspects of the peer visits uh, while the uh, NAP visit is happening. So uh, on the outset, the days have, uh, on all the days, we have been having uh, various activities pertaining to different aspects of uh, the IQAC, pertaining to different uh, aspects of the uh, SSR reports that we submit and the AQAR as well. Thank you, Dr. Allen. Uh, for very nicely summarizing this entire process and uh, giving us a brief overview of the last seven days. Um, I now invite Dr. Melvin Colasso, Registrar of St. Joseph's College for his address. Over to you, Dr. Colasso. Good evening, everyone. Um, this morning, Principal uh, conveyed to me that his inability to attend this uh, function, validity function, and uh, he was all ready with his speech uh, for the occasion. And he requested me to read it out on his behalf. So I'm here to read out his text uh, rather than my speech. And uh, here is what he had to say. Good evening. You will surely agree that these six days have been hectic as well as highly productive. And now that the valedictory session is here, the organizers as well as the participants will look back on these six days as a journey well traveled, a job well done, a task well fulfilled. Congratulations and thanks. The clear insights into the revised NAC norms and procedures, the ample information about the objective of NAC to introduce Paramash scheme, the incisive introduction to the aspects of accreditation framework of NAC, the understanding of the role of teachers in accreditation process, and how a teacher should mentor the students to develop them into socially responsible persons. 
the masterly presentation of the curriculum design delivery and assessment to meet the demands of the current trends as well as the importance of curriculum enrichment and value added courses the better appreciation of the student centric approach in the teaching learning process and innovation related to digital tools the deeper realization of the need for emphasis to be given to research activities and publication selecting good journals for publications and also reaching out to society through various extension activities a detailed overview on infrastructure maintenance updating and providing the right environment for students towards imparting the required knowledge and skills and another detailed analysis of support system that higher education institutions can offer for students and monitoring their progression the need for e governance as well as the best practices distinctiveness sustainability and placement and finally today's excellent and enriching as well as extremely useful panel discussion have all made the participants familiar with the intricacies involved in the process of assessment and accreditation by nac and help them write their ssr with clarity let me therefore congratulate and thank dr wajid director iqac and his dedicated and enthusiastic team for the overall success of this workshop for the excellent resource persons they were able to line up and the meticulous attention to all the details they gave i am confident that all the menti institutions under paramarsh scheme and other participants have benefited greatly from this workshop thank you very much may god bless us all principal on a personal note um i would like to thank all the resource persons because it has been a learning experience for me too though i was not present for the live sessions i have been watching a few videos on the youtube of this workshop and uh, i am sure that not only me the organizers have learned a lot during this seven days i wish to congratulate uh, dr wajid and the team for the meticulous planning and execution thank you and have a nice evening thank you dr kulaso uh, for being here today and also uh, for sharing with us father principal's message in absentia i wish to thank father principal as well uh, for share, for uh, sending out his message through you so thank you to both of you um, i now request father swever de silva sj rector of st joseph's college to deliver his observations over to you father uh, good evening can somebody open my video in case if it cannot open so rishma could you kindly enable that the video video is disabled rishma kindly make father the co-host yeah it's done father okay uh good evening yes uh let me congratulate the iqc team of st joseph's college led by dr said wajid for their wonderful seminar that has been organized for these last few uh days here uh the outcome as i see is uh, is tremendous and a lot of individuals and the colleges have benefited greatly from this and the the amount of information that has been delivered here is as i say is tremendous i would like to congratulate once again the iqc team and uh, dr sayed wajid and all the members uh my message for all the participants is this that please do not consider nac accreditation as just to get a grade from nac it has to be a continuous kind of process as i mentioned earlier that you improve the quality of education that is given in your institution and only if you have this frame of mind in your in you then uh, this nac process has has effect on you it has some kind of uh, good outcome it will be there 
or else we are just working for the numbers and these numbers may not mean anything because ultimately we are not able to deliver the quality. Any institution is known by uh, the quality of students that come out of those institutions. Just like a tree is known by the fruits that are produced, so also the institution will be known by the quality of students that uh, they come out. And therefore, along with the graduate outcomes that we speak about, about knowledge and the skills, I would like to insist that certain amount of attitudinal changes also must come in in our students. The first attitude that we must cultivate in our students is that they must be able to give their best. Excellence. Father, you're muted. Yes, Father, you can speak now. Yeah, somebody muted. Yeah. Uh, one of the important characteristics that we must build in our students is that of being excellent in whatever that they do. Most of the time, our young people are mediocre. They want to do certain uh, things in a, in, a, in a haphazard manner. But I wish that in our institutions, we cultivate that attitude of excellence in our students to give their best, either in studies or sports, in whatever manner. They must be able to have that quality within them, that attitude within them that they must be able to give wherever they are in the jobs or wherever, give your best. The second thing I wish that our students must cultivate in their, uh, uh, during their study and in their life is that they must have a conscience which is able to judge what is right and what is not right. And the ability to select what is good in life. We see so much of corruption that is around here and the way that society moves around. I wish that our students who come out of our institutions are able to judge what is right and do right kind of things. Not uh, take be carried away by the, 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 the various things that happen in the, in the society, but they must have the courage, I must say, to choose the right kind of things. And thirdly, our students who come out of our institutions should also have an ability to look at people with compassion and do something for them, especially uh, do something for such people who are very poor. And if we have that kind of attitude built in our students, I'm sure our education will be successful today and we'll be able to do better. So the three attitudes we try to build up our students, first of excellence, second is of being consci conscientious of choosing what is right and what is good. And the third one is compassion for the poor. And, this is, and those who are in the society who are uh, not so well to do. So with these words, let me uh, also congratulate again, once again, the IQC team and all the participants. I'm sure you have benefited greatly out of it and may God bless all your efforts. Thank you. Thank you, Father Sweepert, for your uh, observations and for encouraging us to continue to maintain quality in higher education. Thank you once again. Uh, to be able to take feedback and then act on it is crucial for improvement and quality sustenance. In view of this, we wish to take feedback from our participants, uh, though we have been taking feedback forms in a more formal manner, we'd like to take feedback uh, from a couple of our participants. We will begin with the feedback from the five many institutions under the Paramarsh scheme. So we will first begin with uh, Nilgiri College of Arts and Science. Um, we have Dr. Muhammad Ali K.A., the IQAC coordinator, who will be uh, giving his feedback on behalf of his college. Over to you, sir. Dr. Muhammad Ali. Sir, are you able to hear us? So are you able Sorry. to hear us? Proceed with the next college, meanwhile. Yeah. Sure. Uh, sure, sir. I'll do that. Uh, we'll move ahead with the second, second feedback presenter. 
uh, we have Mr. Stephen Babu, Head Department of Humanities from Sacred Heart Girls First Grade College. Uh, over to you, Mr. Stephen Babu. Oh. Uh so good afternoon all present here. I'm Stephen. Uh, behalf of Sacred College, I've been presenting. Uh, I want to start the quote of uh, power come from not by Bill Gates. So he's absolutely a fit for the St. Joseph's College because what they don't want to keep their knowledge, they want to share the knowledge with other mental institution. So that's what uh, the program is uh, open up. The seven days uh, workshop of revised NAC norm procedures and the AJC of UGC scheme of Paramesh from 7th Jan to 15th Jan 2021 uh, not only provides uh, knowledge and information about NAC procedures, but uh, for me, uh, very personally, I can say uh, it reflects myself and to understand the standard of higher education and uh, how to impact or develop the holistic uh, you know, uh, approach of education. Uh, is not just namesake of uh, collecting the points from the NAC and uh, label as the NAC accredited colleges, but how to enhance ourselves in all aspects uh, to wholeheartedly we can develop our education is more uh, fruitful for the society. Uh, I, I thank for all the people who have been uh, giving uh, inputs. Um, of course, uh, 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 Wise, uh, Dr. Wise, uh, sir, has taken a very good initiative. Uh, first, I should thank him, as well as uh, I should uh, congratulate him also for his good effort. It's not a just uh, simple task, but it's a very tedious job, but he has taken it pain and uh, given a fruit to us. Uh, uh, thank you, sir, once again for uh, this one. And personally, I, can, uh, I congratulate to you. And uh, uh, this section was been conducted in a very, uh, very organized way. I feel very comfortable at the same time. Uh, I don't want to speak in a very formal way, but I, I wanted to say it's very uh, comfortable. Uh, we've taken a lot of messages from all the resource people. Start from uh, Dr. Davis George, Director, uh, St. Aloysius Institute of Technology, and Karnagaran Sir from uh, CEO of Hindustan Education Institutions. Uh, mainly, I want to say that uh, and nicely, I was inspired by the you know, uh, Karagaran sir's talk, like on uh, LOCF. I think you people remember that learning outcome curriculum framework, and that is uh, given a very good idea that how the curriculum can uh, uh, impart knowledge with a uh, learning outcome objectives. Uh, thank you, sir Karagaran sir, for that uh, wonderful thing in his absence also. And uh, Dr. Father uh, Inaj Muthu, I think I was inspired his speech. Uh, I, I love his speech to you all the time. Uh, I wanted to listen to him because he's a research oriented person. Maybe he's, he always talks about the research and uh, he, he will guide us in such a way that how the research can be very genuine as well as being credit to the people, uh, not to the author, uh, even to the college, how it can grit and how he given a very beautifully explained how to publish the papers in web of science journals and uh, you know scopus index journals and thank you father for this wonderful session i love it i enjoy that too and uh, then i want to talk about uh, the power of pact uh, uh, section which has been given by uh, uh, dr shobna vasudevan a principal of uh, r a porter college mumbai uh, i think her voice and her age is totally different i think like you know he, she's to the extreme core of uh, power pact she never allow us to be, you know, feel like to move our eyes here and there. And he's given very, uh, she's given like, a, you know, a continuously talk about the library and the importance of library and how physically we have to connect, connect to the library uh, to enhance the knowledge of the students. And how, again, he has talked about one thing is called uh, attitude is not just to develop the, you know, uh, infrastructure disabled friendly, like uh, making the infrastructures more disabled friendly, even, even your level of attitude also to be more disabled friendly. So such a wonderful word I can carry in my mind. Uh, so our attitude has to be disabled friendly. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for giving such a wonderful uh, uh, session, which is inspiring and power packed things. And uh, apart from that, I want to talk about uh, Dr. Uh, a. Joseph uh, Durerajan, sir. I think uh, he uh, inspired a lot about the vision and uh, mission of the institution, how to in incorporate like uh, our vision and mission of institution to all activities which have been given that. And that's a, a amazing his, his talk. I was been inspired, and also he was talk about the distinctiveness of colleges. Even I never about that particular criteria, and I, I, I come to know about the criteria, the last criteria, which is called distinctiveness of colleges. 
which unique uh, process or unique activity which have been carried out. So it's about a mind blowing uh, session for me. And he gave that. And I want to talk to, I want to convey to one thing that uh, my college is, uh, uh, I think Doris Raisar is talking about that. He says that uh, no female empowered uh, IQSC members are not there. I think in photograph, you can able to see that uh, two females uh, pillars are in our colleges are there. And uh, Dr. Deepa BM and uh, BM Mamta ma'am and both of them as uh, IQAC coordinator. So I want to convey this information to sir. Uh, our colleges always give importance to the females and empower the females and we are also happy to work under the female uh, leaderships. Uh, and thank you sir, thanks for your wonderful inspiring talk and uh, giving us uh, this one uh, in absence of him actually. Uh, all these things have been successfully have been implemented with the great effort of uh, great leaderships. I think uh, I, uh, without the gratitude it can show to the people, I, I fail to uh, feel guilty to talk about that. Uh, Doctor, uh, sorry, Director Father Svibert De Silva, JCS, and uh, Principal Father D. Victor Lobo, JS Joseph College of Autonomous. Of course, if I missed it one person, that is, I am, I feel I was wrong in that. No, no, I think everybody know about it. The captain of the ship, I think, who's that? Dr. Syed Wahid, IQAC. Uh, thank you, sir, for giving such a wonderful uh, resource people. Even uh, I can't imagine we can connect all the people in one shot in all the areas. I think this is uh, amazing for me. I, I was enjoyed with your work as well as your coordination and the team members, uh, amazing. Uh, there's a work in the screen, behind the screen, a lot of work I know very well. So they have been done a very good job. So I, I love your people. I like your work and commitments. And thank you all for giving a wonderful, job, a wonderful opportunity to express my gratitude and my thank you. We have Sacred God College, Bangalore, Jeevan Bhavanan. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Stephen Babu. Uh, I request all the uh, feedback presenters to please be a bit brief so that we could finish up our presentations on time. Uh, your detailed feedback could be given to us in writing over in the feedback forms and we could have further communications over email using our official email ID as well. So uh, I now request uh, Mrs. Rajeshwari R from St. Joseph's First Grade College, Hunsur, uh, to, to speak on behalf of her college. Over to you, madam. Good evening, all. Indeed, it's a great opportunity to be the part of this workshop. I am Ajish Pri from Department of English, St. Joseph's College, Hunsur. First of all, I express my deepest gratitude to Father Dr. Victor Lubo, SJ, St. Joseph, Principal of St. Joseph's College, Bangalore. Father Swibert De Silva, SJ, Rector of St. Joseph's College, Bangalore. Associate Professor Clement de Souza, Accreditation Amb Ambassador Paramarsh, Dr. Syed Wajid, Director IQSC and Coordinator Paramarsh, and all the team members for creating this fabulous platform. Ma'am, are you able to hear us? Uh, am I audible? Can someone please confirm? Oh, yes, Poonam, yes, Poonam, no. you're audible. I, I think, think uh, we've lost ma'am. Yeah, uh, Mrs. Rajeshwari, are you there? Okay, probably we'll come back to ma'am at a later point. Ma'am, are you there? Yeah. Yes, ma'am, you can go ahead, yeah. you can go ahead. I think we lost you in between. You can go ahead. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, true. Yes. Seven days of workshop has vitalized our knowledge to the process of education. Each resource person and topics has awakened uniqueness of distinctiveness in the admin management, faculty involvement and development, students' involvement, and their motivated programs. Overall, this has inspired us to translate this into practice. Very especially, our college being situated in rural area, all the methods, 
from this workshop has paved the way to render qualitative education to the students and right off that to the management, faculty, students, and supportive staff. Anyway, my few words doesn't describe the whole part of the workshop, but on behalf of our principal and other faculties of mine, I express sincere gratitude for organizing such a wonderful workshop. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for your feedback. Uh, we now have Mrs. Netravati, who is the IQAC coordinator of St. Teresa's Degree College for Women. Uh, ma'am, I request you to go ahead and give us your feedback. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you are. Yeah, good evening to all. Uh, this is Netravati here, IQAC coordinator from the St. Teresa's Degree College for Women. Uh, uh, foremost, I like to say that we are really fortunate to be a mentee institution of the St. Joseph College. Thanks a lot. Uh, today is my privilege to talk a few words. I have a long list to uh, just uh, say thank and express the uh, complete opinion of the seven days workshop. But as ma'am said, Puna ma'am said, yeah, we are really, uh, we are going to share our uh, uh, detailed summary of the uh, opinion towards the towards the workshop. The whole seven day workshop session was uh, flawless and helped us to understand the dark areas where we need to concentrate more to enrich the higher higher education system so ultimately i can say that it was a very informative and tremendous session it was like an oral manual for all of us like nac has given the uh, like systemized uh, written manual but uh, uh, in the session the complete seven day workshop turned into a oral manual where it is there is a link in the youtube also all the many users in future also go with that uh, thanks for all uh, the efforts made by the whole Paramash team and really we have no words to appreciate and show our gratitude. Thanks a ton to whole Paramash team and to all who associated directly and indirectly with this workshop and we are expecting the similar kind and uh, similar type of workshops in future as well. Thanks a lot. Thank you, madam. Uh, we have yet another uh, lady faculty who is heading the IQAC uh, of Gupta College, Mrs. Hemawati. Ma'am, I request you to go ahead and give us your feedback. Am I audible? Uh, yes, ma'am, you are audible. Please go ahead, ma'am. Yeah. A very good evening to the dignitaries present here and my fellow colleagues. Um, truly speaking, if I have to talk about the feedback about this workshop, I should sincerely thank SJC College Management, Dr. Syed Bajit and his SJC IQSC team for their phenomenal effort in organizing this wonderful input workshop. We have gained a lot of knowledge, immense information on the various criteria to be met in the process of working towards this NAC accreditation. The rich experiences which has been shared by various resource persons on different dates. It has given us a lot of insight to all of us who are having this uh, as a dream, especially the talk on the role of teachers, what the teachers can contribute and how they can perform in this process, the information on the enrichment of learning for students and detailing on the infrastructure requirements, infrastructure maintenance, and also the research importance were all really worthy. Each time we were also reminded of how the documentation, how the recording is the key and how it is important at every step we take towards improving the quality at our college. So on behalf of Kutta College, I really thank once again, the SJC management and, the, and Dr. Syed for this wonderful workshop, which has given a opening, a lot of like, and it was like an eye opener, all the seven days was really worth present and worth. And uh, whatever is the criterion which has been given by NAC, it has been conceived so beautifully as PPTs, which is worth saving and worth working towards it. So this knowledge enrichment, I hope in the days to come, this support and knowledge enrichment need to be like, you know, forwarded to us. We look forward to this continued support from our mentor institution. We feel proud to be a part of, like to be under the SJC so that we actively, enthusiastically can work and attain our goal. Thank you so much. Thank you so much on behalf of Gupta College. Thank you, madam, for your valuable feedback. Uh, we would also like to get feedback from other participants as well, but to adhere to our time schedule, uh, we would take feedback from only one more participant 
who belongs to a college other than the mentee institutions. Uh, I request whoever would like to give their feedback to please raise their hand and I would call out your name and uh, you could go ahead and give us your feedback. If there is any participant who wishes to give their feedback, we have uh, Mr. Jaya Prakash. So you could go ahead and give your feedback on behalf of all the other participants. Over to you, sir. So are you able to hear us? Okay, we have uh, uh, Ms. Prafula Chandra. Ma'am, you could uh, unmute your line and uh, go ahead and give us your feedback. Uh, good evening to one and all present here. Good evening, and, sir. Uh, you can go ahead. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Um, it was a wonderful experience, as uh, all the uh, people said. Uh, it was uh, flawless and uh, fantastic information, inputs, which were being given by all the resource people as to what are the accreditation that has to be done. And uh, thank you for our organizing such a wonderful uh, workshop or uh, the faculty development program. And thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you, sir. JC College. Thank you so much, sir. And I would like to thank everybody else who uh, has given us your valuable feedback. And I'm sure we've been looking at all your feedback forms as well. So we have taken uh, your uh, feedback into consideration and we hope to improve uh, and do better. We um, will close in a couple of minutes, but before we do so, there are a couple of reminders that I would like to give you all. The feedback link has been posted in the chat box. I request all of you to please fill that up to get your e-certificates. Uh, the certificate will be sent to your registered email ID by the 24th of January, post which you may contact us on sjciqac14 at gmail.com if you fail to receive it. I also urge you to check your spam as well as your uh, all your emails uh, because sometimes it, the, the certificate may land up in one of those folders before you contact us. Uh, for documentation purposes, like always, we will go ahead with a group photograph now. I urge all of you to please switch on your cameras for the same. Thank you. So, so if you could join us. Uh, kindly, can you uh, just enable the camera for the participants because it has been locked? Yes. Uh, Deshma, could you do that, please? It has been done, sir. I think you should be able to switch on your cameras now. Thank you. Once the photographs have been clicked, could I get a heads up from the person who's taking the snapshot so we could go ahead? I think we can go ahead. Yes, we could go ahead, right, sir. So thank you, everybody. Uh, as we draw to the close of today's program, uh, I invite Ms. Vidisha D'Souza, Assistant Professor from the Department of Communication and member of the IQAC to propose the vote of thanks. Over to you, Vidisha. Thank you, Puna. On behalf of the seven-day online workshop, revised NAC norms and procedures under the AGs of the UGC scheme Paramash, organized by the Internal Quality Assurance Cell, St. Joseph's College Autonomous Bengaluru, 
It gives me great pleasure to thank each and every one of you who had participated wholeheartedly in the successful uh, process of this workshop. I thank our rector, Father Sweeber De Silva, Principal Father Dr. Victor Novo, Registrar Dr. Melvin Colasso, and all the vice principals who have been our pillars of strength to take this workshop forward. I also thank our honorable chief guest, Dr. Ashwath Narayan, Minister for Higher Education, for taking his time off to speak to us and inaugurate the session. I also thank Professor S.C. Sharma, Director for National Assessment and Accreditation Council, for presiding as the guest of honor, marking a successful beginning to this endeavor. Thanking Father Sweeper De Silva as well for sharing his expert thoughts on the role of teachers in assessment and accreditation process on the first day. I extend my gratitude to Father Davis George, Dr. Father Davis George, presently the director at St. Aloysius Institute of Technology for an enlightening session on the second day about curricular aspects. Thank you, sir. Followed by that, the next session on teaching, learning, and evaluation was by Dr. Karuna Karan, the Chief Executive Officer, Hindustan Educational Institutions, Coimbatore. It was a great learning experience from you as well, sir. Thank you. Dr. Father S. Ignasi Mathu, the Director, Xavier Research Foundation, St. Xavier's College, Palayan Kotai, shared his expertise on research innovations and extension. We thank you, sir, for this meticulous session. Followed by this, two sessions were organized on the 12th of January, being infrastructure and learning resources and student support and progression by Dr. Shobhana Vasudevan, Principal of R.A. Pudar College, Mumbai, and Dr. B. Vanita, Secretary, KGISL Educational Institution, Coimbatore. We thank you, Dr. Vasudevan and Dr. B. Vanita, for inspiring us with thoughtful ideas in the realm of infrastructure and learning resources and student support and profession. We had a crystal clear experience with session six, which was on governance, leadership, and management, and session seven on institutional values and best practices by Dr. A. Joseph Dorai Raj, the Dean, School of English and Foreign Languages, Gandhi Gram Rural Institute, deemed to be University, Tamil Nadu. Thank you, Dr. Dorai Raj, for your meticulous explanations on these themes. My wholehearted gratitude to the panelists for today, Professor Amiya Kumar Rath and Dr. B.S. Omoni Raj, advisors at the National Assessment and Accreditation Council, Ministry of Education, Government of India for an insightful session on better performances of colleges. Thanks to Dr. Syed Bajit as well for moderating this session. The successful functioning of this workshop would not have happened without the leadership of all the criteria coordinators. Dr. Arun Mani, Professor A.M. Bojama, Dr. Arun Varma Kampin, Dr. Jai Shankar, Professor Amita Priyadarshini, Dr. Vaishnavi, Professor Poonam Ahuja, Dr. Nikhil Jha, and Dr. Alan Godfrey, and all my colleagues with their constant presence as MCs, moderators, technical assistants, and volunteers for the workshop. I also thank Dr. Suhas DP, Dr. S. Ramagopala Krishnan, and Professor Shushobin for looking into the technical aspects and the certificates as well. The newsletter team consisting of Dr. Ramagopala, Professor Ma, Professor Apurva Rabi, Dr. Viola Mendons, Dr. Bajit, and Ms. Reshma, and our student team led by Ivan needs a special mention as well. Thank you. Thanks to Ms. Reshma, the secretary of IQAC, once again, who has been handling the conduct of the seven-day workshop so smoothly. Now, all of this wouldn't have been possible without the consistent planning, ideation, and teamwork that was led by our very dear colleague and the director of IQAC and coordinator of Paramash and the convener of this workshop, Dr. Syed Rajit. Dr. Vajit has been meticulously working on this workshop and his vision and constant effort is always appreciated. 
Thank you, Dr. Bajit. May your light shine always. I should also never forget to mention Professor Clement D'Souza, the Accreditation Ambassador of Paramash, a resourceful mentor to all of us and a great multitasker. Professor D'Souza, thank you for always being there as a mentor and a dear colleague to us. Thanking all our active participants for their participation, questions, feedback, and appreciation towards the seven day workshop. Thanking one and all once again. Have a good evening. Thank you.